Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. Seldom do I update these what we know so far videos so rapidly, but such is the case with the Aya project that it is moving at an amazing clip, which we're gonna go over in a moment. Uh, but I just wanna to touch base. It is no longer called the Aya Eve. It is actually called the Aya Neo. Hopefully that is the final name for this particular product so that we don't have to keep on changing it. But that's what it is called right now. It is called the Aya Neo. Very briefly, let's go over the small history of where we've been. So in April is when they basically initially started the project or at least announced the project and had that Lego-like design. Uh, in May, they refined it a little bit. It should be noted that both the April and May prototype that they have was using the AMD 4500U. In June, they basically had a weird render prototype with these weird hook grips uh, and then later on kind of refined that a bit. This particular prototype that you're seeing with the render is actually the latest render of it, um, the proper controls. Uh, and then if we go into the July one, we actually take a look and see that the July model has not the final controls. Uh, someone in the YouTube comment had pointed it out. It is indeed a grafted, uh, a basically a, a repurposed iPega controller, which you can see in this particular graphic right here. They are reusing those parts one to one. The main takeaway here is that while these controllers are on this machine, they are just a proof of concept. They are not the final design of the controllers themselves. That is for a later date. The proof of concept here is to show that the machine works, that it runs on battery, that the thermal solution is, is supported, and what type of battery life and performance we can get out of the main unit itself. Having said that, you can see that they did indeed print out that render itself. The good news here is that the prototype is actually using the main chassis as we can see. It's just using different types of controls at the moment. All right, so the IA group has sent me a few videos that I'm going to comment over for you guys. In this particular video, you can see the digitizer cable being connected to the main board. This next video coming up is actually pretty critical. There's actually a few pieces of information in here that we're answering questions that I hadn't even bothered asking just yet. So we get to see the unit power on. We get to see the touchscreen working as well as accelerometer. Like the accelerometer jazz right here, you're going to see that it is portrait style and then the accelerometer tilt. And you can see it right there, go landscape. So that's working. You can see touchscreen working. I have confirmed that 10 point touch is working. They don't show off any pinch to zoom type of stuff, but they have confirmed that it is working. And then in here, we can get a little bit of a glimpse at the battery information, which is pretty critical. We'll kind of stop it right here to take a closer look. One thing that I would like to point out in this particular image is that obviously we can see that it is using the 4500U. They have 16 gigs of RAM. The date that is there when they recorded this is July 25th, so it's a few days ago. Uh, and then also we can see here a very critical piece of information that the power state is battery only. Uh, we can see the capacity and voltage, and if we multiply those together, we do indeed get 47 watt hours, which is exactly what they said it was. So everything is looking really positive here. The BMS is working, and the battery is what it's supposed to be. And now this is just the connection between the display itself and the motherboard. It's properly labeled LCD and MB for motherboard. Uh, before the ribbon cable that you saw was the touch digitizer being connected. That is for the touch points for the display and motherboard to work proper. This is just for the display part of it. Now it should be noted that the touch panel is indeed MIPI based. So there is some type of conversion happening here. This is most likely EDP to MIPI itself. This is a critical part uh, for these low cost PC handhelds because we often need to convert from EDP to MIPI. So solving this is one actual big problem as well as running from battery. And you can see that big Mamma Jamma 47 watt hour that's kind of gonna be super heavy and making it more or less kind of off balance on one side from my previous video. And then you see that CMOS battery just kind of dangling about, which I hope they fix. And then they have this, you know, NVMe SSD with a big chonkin heatsink on it that it looks <laughs> super custom. It's like, eh, let's slap some copper on it. Uh, but you can see that it's relatively easy to access, uh, provided that, you know, when you're taking it off. Now, hopefully they update how this CMOS battery is, because having it kind of looping around here, I don't anticipate that's how it should be. Um, hopefully that isn't the case because I really wouldn't like it like that, but if it is, then say la vie. Uh, really cool part here, we can see the 
plastic, those three printed rails over there, that's the kind of switch joy, uh, Joy-Con rail style, obviously Aya's own design. And you can see the spring mechanism for uh, removing the, you would press those down to basically clip or unclip the controllers themselves. And then we get a clear view of the backside where we see the exhaust as well as the inlet for the fan grill inlet. So finally we get a shot of the backside of this and this is exactly how the 3D printed render was previously just with different controls. So again, we get to see the chassis that they printed out from that 3D renter is in use. And here is actually, it as a proof of concept, we have a good idea of what to expect. Um, now, the one thing that I do want to point out is you're going to kind of see these, uh, the power and volume kind of just kind of flop out. I don't anticipate this to be the case uh, with the final unit. Usually they have those kind of stripped together so that it's all in one piece. Uh, I wouldn't really anticipate you to be kind of when you disassemble this and putting it back together to have much of a problem. Alrighty, so this is the last video that the Aya Group have provided to me, and uh, there is a two actual critical pieces of information that they show in this video, which is still pretty valuable, and we'll kind of go over that. Now, they are running Ida64. They are going to do a very simple stress test on the CPUs. Now, the 4500U is a six-core SOC, six CPU cores. Uh, so when we gun that, you can see that it reaches 100% CPU usage, so all six threads. Uh, they're not 12 threads. There's no hyper-threading on the 4500U, no SMT. Uh, so we are just gunning those CPUs. Now, it is important to note here, they are going to go back to Ida64, and they're going to show us the battery management time. So you're going to see battery time remaining. Uh, this is actually pretty critical. So you see it's saying five hours and three seconds remaining. If we keep our eyes on the bottom left hand side of this, that's actually going to dynamically change and it goes down to like an hour and 15 minutes. What that tells me is that the total system power right now is around 30 watts, uh, especially when we compensate for a 47 watt hour device. That is accurate. That like if what I'm looking at here tells me that right now the system is using 30 watts total. Um, that's cool. That's awesome. Later on in this particular video, you're going to see the temperatures of the device itself. Now, again, we are gunning the CPUs and the CPUs only. In gaming-related tests, temperatures will be far better than what is here. This is actually a worst-case scenario. So they're actually going to bring up the temps of the device, and we can see it's 78 degrees Celsius on the CPU right there. That's not bad, considering that we're gunning those six CPUs. It's not great, but it's not bad, especially for a proof of concept device. Again, I want to kind of hammer home the point that this is a proof of concept device. The Aya Group have a tremendous amount of work left to have a sellable product. They have to test and verify the PCBs. They have to design and make those controllers work as they should, instead of kind of using other parts to have a, a working demo so they can show games and stuff, which is kind of the core point of this at the moment versus a a full sellable product. Anyway, let's kind of recap and talk about what we saw in this video. The accelerometer is working. Touch is working. We saw that clear as day. It was super responsive. I would tend to believe that the 10 point touch is obviously working, but I don't have any proof of that right now. So that's why I put allegedly there. Now from the software itself, we saw 47 watt hour confirmed based on the capacity and the voltage. Uh, based on having 78% of the battery left and then running that stress test and showing like an hour and 15 minutes left, I am saying that the total system power at that point was more likely 30 watt, but I'm putting a little bit more here saying 30 to 35 watt, depending on however the brightness swing is on the LCD and any other thing. 99 percentile is probably going to be at 30 watt total system power, especially because the IR group has been saying that this is running at 18 watt TDP. So that's a 12 watt overage for all the other parts running. So that's SSD, RAM, LCD, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all the whole kit and caboodle is looking like 30 watt. Now, that is to say that that's how this proof of concept runs, not that that's what the total power is going to be at the final version, just what I'm basing, I'm looking at the time remaining and then calculating on that. So now here's the critical good news from this proof of concept. The battery management system is working and it appears to be working correctly. This is actually super huge. Uh, this is a critical part of a handheld device, a portable device by itself, having Windows uh, or any operating system having a hardware input to know how much battery life is remaining is super critical. Uh, the tech, the touch and accelerometer working. Now, I was only anticipating touch to work. I didn't even think to ask about an accelerometer, but we actually sh got it shown that it was working, so that was super cool. 
The other part that is super critical, the uh, embedded display port to MIPI adapter, because the display itself is MIPI. Uh, it is a MIPI, a MIPI panel, not a display port panel. Showing that working is another critical component to show working at this point in time. That is super huge as well. The current heatsink isn't bad, but we also had it from a not great scenario. We're just stretching, uh, stressing CPU, which can get the machine hotter. So it's not terrible, but I hope that that improves in the final version as well. The core chassis of this original print that we have is still there in this proof of concept. So what's left? They still have to finish the final controller design and then showing those working as they should. And then they also still need to work on the PCB and get that done. There is still a lot of work done and to remaining to be done. Uh, it's still a few months out before they even sell, and they'll probably only sell domestically only before they even look to sell international. So again, we're still months away from anyone having this in their hands as a final product, but it's still exciting to see how far these guys came in such a short time frame. I'm sure they're going to be showing game videos and other stuff so you can kind of get an idea of performance. Anyway, that is part two of what we know so far regarding the Aya Neo. As always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.